Who could possibly be hiding behind this emoji? I know, right? You're shocked, you're stunned, you're surprised because, hey, it's me, Joel here, and I've got my spinner. I can't put this thing down. I just, it, I get it now. I get it. I've been using my fidget cube like crazy, uh, but now ever since I've got the spinner, I just, I sit here at my desk. I don't get any work done. I just, I spin all day long. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Joel.Live. No, I have not changed my last name. And yes, Com is my real name. So, you know, get off of that whole thing there. And uh, while you're jumping in the room, I'm going to invite you to go right underneath the video and click the share button to spin. That's all you got to do. Okay, let's talk about branding online. Um, thanks to those of you who are sharing the broadcast. Please continue to do so because you're about to meet somebody who is an exquisite brander, an exquisite human being as well. He's become a, a friend of mine, and uh, we've got some stories to tell about how we met uh, and the power of social media. He is the CEO and founder of TweetPages.com and Image Designs. His name is Mr. Matt Clark. Matt, welcome to the broadcast. How you doing, Joe my friend? Com. All right, so I think I think we've made it. Yeah, no, well, I've made it. Now you're here as well, and I'm, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this, is, this is my friend Matt Clark, and uh, Matt is actually responsible for a lot of the design work that I've been using on my social profiles and on my blog for how many years now? More than we both can remember uh, with our combined brains together. No, I, well, it's been uh, 2008, 2009. Okay, Hot. so let's let's go back um, to how we met, and I like the way you tell the story. <laughs> well, uh, so yeah, it was actually somehow you saw some of our content that we had. Been, of course, we started in two thousand eight, uh, right after the really the the recession. So my other design business is ImageDesigns.com. And where we do print, branding, uh, you know, brochures, posters, banners, vehicle wraps, all those kind of things. So that was uh, – and we had contact, contracts with organizations. And what had happened is in the end of 2007, December 2007, we lost all of our contracts within eight months. And a buddy of mine told me about Twitter, uh, Phil Ayers, uh, shout out to him. And he said, hey, you need to jump on Twitter to, to find out about or to advertise image designs. And so I jumped on there, saw that you could make a graphic, made a background, popped it up. My buddy said, hey, make me one. Another friend said, hey, can you make us one? So I made several just for friends and myself. And uh, actually, David Admore, he's still out there, said, hey, I like your backgrounds. How much? And I was like, how much? you'd pay for a Twitter background? That sounds ridiculous. Now, this is in 2008 when all this, you know, Twitter, Facebook. Well, this, this is when your Twitter stream would show up in the middle and the sides would, you would right. be able to have whatever background you wanted on it, plus your header. Right, right. So, yeah, the layout always changes on all the social media, so we're always having to keep up to date. So, basically, that just gave me an idea. Well, maybe, maybe, I, maybe there's something there. Uh, so we started to put together tweetpages.com. First time I ever created a website and got into virtual space. I had always been CMYK print, and that's when I got into the RGB virtual world of design uh, with web and you know virtual graphics, things like backgrounds and all that stuff. So uh, somehow within that 2008 2009 time frame, you had emailed me and said, "Like your stuff. My name is Joel Com." Of course, I didn't. I didn't know who you were at that time. Uh, I, I and, don't know who I, I still finding myself. And, and, and that's that. when your email said, I'm not sure who I am either. But, um, so you emailed me and so I emailed back. First of all, I, you know, I Googled you and checked you out and saw that you popped up a couple times. I felt uh, that when you Googled me, by the way, yeah. <laughs> it was like a disturbance in the force. It was. So I ended up emailing you back saying, Hey, you know, love to get to know you and, and connect a little bit more. And um, emoji cushion. And so the uh, 
uh, I guess your assistant at that point said, hey, uh, Joel is on at a speaking at a conference. So this was a, probably the second time that I felt the power of social media, which was uh, the first being that guy, David Admore, and seeing stuff. But then the second time was you. And all of a sudden, the next day, we see Joel Com recommends tweet pages. I was like, I haven't even connected with this guy, Joel, and he's already saying this. You are actually at the conference speaking yeah, uh, live in front of the audience, had our website up. And the funny part was a current client of ours, uh, Jacqueline Whitmore, the etiquette expert. Shout out to her. She was actually in the audience. And to my understanding, she actually stood up or said something and said, yeah, I know, Matt. We're doing work with him. He does a great job. And, you know, kind of interrupted you talking, I guess. Uh, so the funny part was both of you after had reached out. She reached out to me immediately and said, hey, you're not going to believe this. Joel Collins at a conference and I'm at. And he started talking about you. And then later you were like, yeah, this strange woman stood up and started talking about you, Matt. And so it was cool to see the viralness of people mentioning tweet pages and, and you know, just all over the place at that point uh, was very new to me. So I was like, wow, this social media thing is pretty powerful uh, yeah. when you make connections. You know, look, a lot of things that we talk about, we don't talk about because we're getting paid. We talk about it because we like it. And I saw the work you were doing and I didn't see anybody else creating custom uh, backgrounds and headers for Twitter. And I knew I had to have, you know, I'm writing the book on Twitter for credit a lot. I need to have custom uh, background for mine as well. And that's when we connected and, and you've designed a number of backgrounds while those were still, you know, what, uh, what we did. And then you designed um, various social banners for me as well. In fact, I'm going to see uh, using the new feature on BeLive, I'm actually able to log into Facebook and uh, at least I'm supposed to, and I should be able to go to my header photos. Let me let me try this. I'm just going to do this on the fly. Cover photos. Yep, here we go. I'm going to I'm going to show let's see if I can go back in time. Um because right now it's just loading the most recent. It's loading uh only the most recent ones. So Which uh, by the way, and when we originally started, my idea was there were I don't know, 2. Point some million people on Twitter. I was just going to create generic ones and sell them for 99 cents and sell to a million people and retire. Yeah. But uh, so they people, wanted custom. people wanted custom like this. So. Yeah. People can see, you know, the branding that we did across um, social and this, these were banners that were made for a number of, uh, of different sites. Now, uh, you know, for Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, you know, we kind of went the, the full gamut on these here. So maybe talk a little bit about the, uh, the importance of doing, you know, this kind of branding. Why do people need to brand their, their content? No, absolutely. Well, it, the biggest, I think there are two things that you can hit when you're when you're dealing with your brand, and that's clarity and consistency. Uh, and clarity deals with the focus, and this is the the basically removing the um, all the things that distract us. And in this industry, the industry is saturated with do it yourself, which there's nothing wrong with DIY. It's, it's great that there's a lot out there. Unfortunately, there are a lot of DIY out there that people don't know what they're doing, and that's the bad part. Uh, not to mention that there, there's never been a, you know, a time when there's been as much graphics, vector, photos, audio, video, digital assets at your fingertips. And you can buy them on every corner of the Internet nowadays. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're, in essence, just creating noise. Well, and most of us, let's let's be fair, okay? I recognize my own skills and also the vast chasm of things, the, the gap where I don't have skills. I am not a graphic designer. You know, I can use an app like Canva or Word Swag to take a picture of myself and overlay some text on it for a quick internet meme. Uh, but to brand myself, uh, right. they would be, it would be detrimental 
for me, a non-professional graphic designer. Right? I couldn't even be a graphic. I'm not even a graphic designer at all. Forget non-professional. Forget amateur. I'm like, what's sub-amateur? That's me. So I'm not going to to do that because I know that doesn't make me look good. It's like people who self-publish books and do all the design themselves. You could tell for the most part, 99.9% of them right. are done by people who have no business doing it. And they're so proud of their work. And I look at it and go, this is horrible. This makes you look bad. Right, right. Well, and with the saturation, that means there's also more designers out there. Not a bad thing. Uh, and there are tons of talented designers out there still, uh, way more talented than me. But there are tons who are actually just copying and pasting the graphics and content that are being produced mm -hmm. and not changing it. And you're getting the same content that everyone can produce out there. So they're not thinking about your brand and focusing your clarity is having someone help you carve out your niche listening to your heart, your passion, your goals, and putting it down on paper virtually. Uh, but uh, because focus, because we're saturated with so much content, it will help you clearly communicate your message even better. So having someone be able to do that, a, a designer or someone who can help you look through and even process through in communication, taglines, slogans, those kind of things, to clarify, I think it, it, it's the difference between kind of starting out, definitely use all these DIY, grab graphics, there are tons out there. But as you move through and you want to go to the next level, you're going to need to some, have someone help you process that and get you there. So there's the next thing, which is consistency. The one thing for, for since we began 2008, Tweet Pages uh, brand has been the same. And a lot of people, a lot of people get tired of that. They look at their website and they go, because you're looking at your own website a lot, right? Typically. And uh, people would go to your own website and go, well, it's the same. I want to change it up. The reality is there are new people coming to your content on a regular basis, as well as um, old clients who want to come back and look at your website and see something familiar. Oh, that's right. There's, there's Matt with Tweet Pages, or there's Joel, uh, joelcom.com. So having that familiar, familiarity, say that five times. Well said. No, just once is good. <laughs> um, so consistency is key in branding, making sure that you're constantly communicating your, your colors, identity, logo, uh, will help create brand. And those, those are different. So Your yeah, logo, so identity, and brand are... are Kind of three different things, and we'll talk about those in a moment. I just want to show people this is uh, to you know for consistency. This is my uh, logo that it, it currently exists on the site. This is being redone by Matt um, as we speak, uh, and you could see the colors we have here very reminiscent of the colors that were seen on. Uh, let me pull this back up again here on. The graphics here so you'll notice that the the bar which somebody mentioned looks a little bit like a kind bar you know has these uh green blue red orange colors and if you look at the uh, the website again you'll see that the different pages stick with the, the theme here right so there's consistency the logo the uh changes the color here the background page for each of the different segments of uh things that i do now what i want to put up right now is show people your page it's a, this will give them an idea of why i was so attracted to what you were doing in the first place um, as you know i am known for fun and uh while this has evolved over the years I immediately picked up on your uh, your joie de vie, you know, your childlike <laughs> curiosity, your playfulness. And as I look at tweetpages.com, we're actually on the pricing page there, but just to go to the home page, uh, let's see, we'll pull that up here. This is so fun. And you can see there's some uh, work that you've done here. There's uh, work that you've done for Michael Hyatt, Nicole Lappin. How many go uh, go through here on this? Because I want to let it go and see. Um, there's Dallas Travers. Beautiful work done on these. 
See, we're, we're talking can, about taking your design up a notch to brand you in, in such a way that you've got consistency and develop loyalty. Um, oh, look, there's that guy. I love these, too. Look at the little way those popped when I did that. Let me do that again. Will they pop again? I think you have to refresh the page. It only does it on I the I want to the refresh page. it just so I can see them pop again. Everybody walk. <laughs> oh, boing, boing, boing. Uh, there's me, there's Michael Hyatt, there's Brian Johnson, and, and a bunch of other testimonials here and, and people that, that you've worked with. So it's just, it's it's super fun. Uh, but one of the things that I really like about what you do, Matt, is when you do work for somebody, uh, you do these videos. Like, just, if it's just, even just for a logo, I was so blown away when you were designing something for me, and you sent me a link to a video, and you said, watch this and tell me what you think. And you actually, right. in the video, you show, we can go this way and do this, this, and you show examples, and we can change the color, and you're doing all this on the fly, or we can do this. I've never had anybody in graphic design uh, demonstrate for me like that, the, the thought process of the designer in bringing me into it in such a way that, you know, you wanted to see what resonated with me. Right. Well, and that stemmed really from the challenge of Twitter. And again, uh, the spec for social media change. Thanks, Henny. Uh, all the time. Um, so you have to, what we would have to do is show people, I basically would have to email clients and say, here's why I designed what I did. So I'd have to email them constantly. So I thought, well, is, there's got to be a better way that I can show them. So it originated from doing tweet page proofs. So we do, for every client, we do a, a tweet page proof. So uh, we'll get, jump on there to screen, uh, we use ScreenFlow. So uh, you see me and then you see the screen and I pop over in the corner and then I'm able to show and explain why we do uh, what we do and why we designed it this way, as well as any rap trails that I went off and, but, hey, you know, we didn't talk about this, but here's an idea because uh, I get crazy and creative sometimes. So I want to show clients that as well as it kind of helps them uh, peek into my brain as to why we went down that road. And so it's very helpful for the client to see that and hear that at the same time. And that's quite honestly how we ended up doing um, uh, some work from Michael Hyatt as well. We, we had done some work a long time ago in the very beginning and we didn't have that in place. And then the second time he came by, we did. He received the video and he was impressed with the video. Uh, and, and how it was customized to him. And, and he was kind of like, hey, did you, just, did you do this just for me? He said, he actually has this on his blog. And I'm like, well, I'd, I'd love to say it was just for you, but it's for every client. And um, so that didn't kind of impress him. So that's, I think, um, having that video makes it personal. You actually see me. You actually know it's a real person. Uh, thinking, and processing. Is there, is there a demonstration of one of those on your site? I'm just think, curious about that now. It's actually not on there, but I have plenty of links that I can share. Um, Why don't you uh, Facebook message me um, a link? Because I want to I want to actually pull that up. That's how impressive I thought that was. Just send it in a private message here. And uh, while you're doing that, I'm just going to uh, let people know that if you want to comment on this broadcast, you might be watching it at one of the shared places. But you need to come to the page where the broadcast originates. Same video. We're, we're there just like we're here, but when you comment, I can then click your comments and put them on screen like this. Uh, and Mitch says, understanding people and platform use have evolved over the years. Is there a big branding must do in today's digital world that you recommend? That's a great question, Mitch, and uh, we'll let you take that, Matt. I know you're looking for the link, but we yeah, got to I was looking for the link. Sorry, I'm just saying people on platform use have evolved over the years. Are big. Well, I, again, I think part of what I was saying earlier is making sure that you align yourself with someone who's going to actually think about your brand. And more than just the logo, more than just a color, a font, um, uh, uh, an icon, it's more about the identity and evolving the brand as a whole, uh, having someone work with you. Uh, with that and then consistency i can't tell you enough that the more you drive the same content the same now it doesn't have to be cookie cutter it doesn't mean that you take the same exact thing and you put it on everything there's there's variety within your 
you know, uh, your design. Matter of fact, even with your stool, we have the same logo, but what the fun we had with it was we were able to use color variations so that when you got to the entrepreneur, it was one color. When you got to uh, the, the speaker, it was another. Uh, author, it was another. So we were able to have some fun with it a little bit, yet still remain consistent with its identity uh, and, and look. So I think those two things are very key and important to in today's uh, digital world that um, you've got to just make sure that you're consistent out there. You're constantly you know, communicating that as, okay. as well as updating. I mean, that's that's another whole ball game. Let, let, I want to get inside the mind of a branding expert. OK. Um, and yes, Tim, if you post Joel.live, it will get highlighted just like that. And uh, Jay's actually put a link to your website on Facebook. So anybody can go click that. Don't leave the video because I'm about to ask Matt a powerful question that's going to be very, very useful for you. Because what I want to do here is I want to get inside the mind of a branding expert. And I, and I would like the questions that you must First, ask. Fine one. What's that? I said, first, we got to find one. Yeah, well, we got to find, find your mind. Uh, the questions that you ask, I think, are important. And so I would like to come at it from the process that you go through. When somebody comes to you and says, I need branding and subsequent design, how do you approach that? What are the questions you ask and how do you look at it to get started? Because essentially, you're starting with a blank slate uh, you know, it's it's a blank canvas and what they bring to that. Right, right. So uh, and, and, and a real world example, while, you know, we've done work for you, Joel, we've also done work for like Brian G. Johnson. We just put all his uh, his website, his logo, as well as his new book uh, cover that we just did for him. And the process was all about spending a lot of time in discussion with where do you want to go? And a lot of it was just back and forth and and him just kind of you know talking out what he loves what he likes to see uh key words and so i'm looking for the passion uh words behind the again over what color do you like what font do you like those are those are things that come later in my opinion but what i want to know is what is the legacy what is the what is the motivation behind what you're trying to build and why because what I want to try and do is be able to basically listen enough. I think that's part of the problem with a lot of designers today is they don't listen well to be able to basically uh, swallow up what you're trying to say and regurgitate. Uh, that sounds kind of disgusting. Regurgitate back uh, your your passion. And, and I think that's uh, the sign of a, a good designer, potentially a great designer, is being able to do that. And uh, being able to hear and listen and then be able to produce back. And so what I want to be able to do is put down, again, on paper, that logo that is communicating that. From the logo, then you create identity elements. And part of it is being able to give identity elements, uh, whether it be colors or patterns, uh, 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 those kind of things that you can use in your design. So we give you all the digital assets at your fingertips so that you can, as well as a branding guideline, so that you can produce those on your own. Let's, in other um, words, uh, we, we give enough content so that you can become the expert designer. I'm going to pull up this video because, again, I think this is really impressive what you do here, and I'm going to mute it. Um, I just want you to, you to kind of walk through the process of uh, as you're showing this client. Is this a, a pretend client or a real client? This is a real client. Okay, so real yeah. client. His name's Brian. Yeah, this is Brian. And, 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 uh, basically, basically, we go through you know what's available, what each one is. Here's your avatar in the blue. Here's your Twitter header in the green. Uh, what you see live is not what we design behind the scenes because certain things get cut off. It, people will know that if they try and design to it and all of a sudden something gets cut off. So we have to kind of, you know, basically make sure we design in the, in the sweet spot. And so we kind of help our clients understand what that is and why we design what we do. So then we go through variations on their avatar, which are important. I mean, the avatar or your profile picture, uh, we design those for you and, those are going to be on every piece of social media that you do. 
even though we can't design for Pinterest, that little gra that little picture is there. Brand consistency is seeing the same face or, or logo or combination of face and logo, whatever it may be that you want to do on all of those social media. So we want to make sure that we create a beautiful avatar that matches your overall brand. And then, of course, then we end up, you know, going through uh, the different variations of Twitter headers that we say, hey, here's one, here's one, et cetera, that we kind of present. And yeah, so and I'm, then, just, I'm clicking through the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we Some of them we are slight variations to major, uh, you know, different takes on designs that we kind of show the client. And then below that, you'll see the, all the proofs, and then they can kind of click on it. They can rewatch the video, or they can click on those and just see them. Uh, and then below that, they have an area where they can actually just communicate which ones they like the best. Yeah, see, this, the, this is really important to me. As you're building a powerful brand, uh, to be working with somebody, and again, I, you know, this is not a uh, this is not a commercial for Matt. This is I am impressed with the work. Matt has done, and I've hired him to do my work, but the, what I really want you to take away from this is how important branding is and that you work with somebody who under, who takes it seriously, okay? Right. Because, you know, th this to me is one of the things that impressed me most is that you have, uh, you work with people to find out exactly what it is they need and and you listen well you know Kim just made a comment right here a great designer listens first and creates second and for me that's essential that you know there's there's times I've had people do work for me and uh, they're like well this is what you know here here's what we've made for you this is what you know you should use and I'm like that doesn't feel like me and and then they feel um, somehow slighted because I'm not appreciating their work to the fullest. And uh, the fact of the matter is if the client ain't happy and if you, it doesn't feel like it resonates with you, then you're not going to use it. Right. Well, and it's all also about building trust with the client, uh, obviously in, in every client relationship, um, but building trust enough so that I can then communicate any expertise and or ideas, concepts to them, uh, because there's been many of clients who said, oh, I want it to be you know, purple and green with a butterfly and a flag, whatever. I, I'm, I'm making up stuff here. Um, and I'm kind of going like, wait a minute. What actually, actually there was a, there was a client a long time ago that wanted a, something like a space shuttle with their, um, the letter P was in their name. I'll, I won't say the client's name. And they talked about some kind of rocket space shuttle thing. And I'm thinking, you do tile and carpet. Are you <laughs> carpet in the space shuttle? I, I'm confused. So I was able to listen, produce what they wanted, but also say, hey, now let me show you what I think you should do. And then I went down and, in, and sure enough, that's the area they went, yes, that's it exactly. And they're able to produce exactly um, what they needed and desired, yet it was it was correct in communicating tile and carpet for their industry and for their business. Uh, so building that trust is also part of it, and that's what starts out by listening. And now, the type of design that uh, somebody might need for their branding is going to vary based on the client. You know, not everybody is is uh, is concerned about the social platforms as they are the design for their blog or their landing page. And so that's part of listening. Now I came to you with a project that you had, I don't think you had done it before. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I saw the popularity of infographics and I thought I want an infographic that is a biography of my career and call it a biographic. Uh, and, and you created one for me and I'm gonna put that up here on the screen and uh, make it so it's focused so people can see it's on my entrepreneur page. And this is an infographic uh, with me about 25 pounds ago on it that takes you on the history of my, uh, my romp with technology and then being an entrepreneur online with the, uh, the high points of my career from going online to 95 to my first book to selling the Yahoo games 
to uh, Google AdSense and my books and my bestseller, my video and so on. This biographic was created as a branding tool for me. Now it uh, was last updated in 2013, hint, hint. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, <laughs> a lot has happened since then. And so we need to uh, update this, but you know, this whole um, idea of doing a biographic is just a really fantastic branding piece that anybody can um, can have created, right? Yeah, and, and so we ended up creating biographic.me, so biographic me, um, so that you can go there. Uh, we did some stuff for uh, social media marketing world. Uh, I can't remember what they're doing and, and several other clients that – um, that you can go and, and take a look at a few general, you know, or image designs is my main business. Two pages is the social media biographic dot me is the infographics kind of stuff. We have some others as well, but it's all me, uh, sitting in my office, in my garage, which I call the garage. And so I'm just designing away whatever you need. Um, so it can be print and, and that's what ends up happening a lot of times is, Tweet pages, well, maybe do your social media, but then somebody will say, hey, could you – now, I think when we did this for you, Joel, at that time we were redoing that logo and those, you know, that color bar. Um, we ended up saying, hey, we need, you need some business cards with the same identity and look, so we ended up doing your business cards as well. I wish I had one which hand. Which I'm sure we'll redo. I wish I had one hand. I don't use business cards anymore. That's the thing. Oh, there it is. Look at there. <laughs> you have my card. Again, that was uh, a few pounds ago. Um, but yeah, real, really nice. <laughs> um, if you guys have questions, then you. please go to this page. Uh, by the way, just saw something cool that BeLive now has. This is a new feature. It used to be if you shared a, a lower third item, um, it would overlay the names. But what it just, just did now is it pushed them down. So good work, guys, at, uh, at BeLive.tv. By the way, those of you that aren't familiar with this platform, uh, Matt, what do you think of this platform that we're using here? It, it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. this, this, this is nice. It's very um, within, well, we had a little hiccup in the beginning, but who knows, that, that could have been our ISP. So uh, anybody can go to BeLive.tv and create their own show uh, that will let you do stuff like this, like put comments on screen in lower thirds and bring guests in and you know, have a talk show um, format. And I see Brian G. Johnson is in the house. You actually did some work for Brian as well. I think it's – is it BrianGJohnson.tv? It is. Which, by the way, Joel, speaking of live and – um, is uh, what Brian G. Johnson is doing on you know, lots of YouTube stuff. Um, I, and, and anybody kind of feel free to give me feedback. One of my goals is to actually go live maybe once a week and kind of allow you to look over my shoulder as I'm designing for a client. So being able to show what I'm doing and where I'm going and those kind of things with a different client projects and those kind of things. Um, and just wonder if that's of any interest to people if they were able to see that and look over the shoulder and and of course I have lots of feedback and talk and snide remarks and those kind of things. But yeah, so this is Brian G. Johnson's site. Uh, again, being able to create um, his photos. He did he had great photographer. I will say that that is one key thing to do is get some really professional photos. There's a difference when um uh, thanks kim that there's a difference when um i receive photos from people and they're kind of you know doing a selfie which selfies are in it's okay to have that kind of look and feel but when you get some photos like brian g johnson did uh it is powerful to be able to basically design it's it's like cake the icing on the cake when i get to be a designer and have those digital assets at my fingertips I like that. Let's uh, answer this question from Hilda. Is it okay to do the Facebook cover profile with my branding design or should be done on the business page and website only? Well, that's a great question. And in the past, it was you could not promote business on a personal profile. You would get in trouble by Facebook. I don't know how strict they are um, with that. Uh, so it used to be that you could potentially get banned. Uh, from doing that 
I don't know how their rules have changed over the years. I generally say, hey, of course, my personal profile, I want to make sure that I'm dealing with my friends. I don't want to be selling them. But if you've got something in the corner saying, hey, by the way, I'm Matt Clark. This is who I am. And I'm over here at Tweet Pages. And you've got a little bit kind of advertisement on your personal profile. I think that's pretty cool to be able to do that. And then full on, you know, advertising business showing off on your business uh, page profile. Let's uh, jump over to Mitch. He's got a great question here. Any tips with using DIY mobile video to help brand an individual or small business? Well, again, having your some of the consistency as far as your design, as far as what video tools to use out there, I, I'm not aware of all the tools that you could use. Matter of fact, I, Joel probably be the, the better one to answer this. And even Brian G. Johnson, because he's been doing a lot of mobile video stuff. Joel's always walking around with an iPhone in his, in his face. Uh, but being able to make sure that your logo's in the, yeah, <laughs> that your logo's in the corner uh, as a watermark, having a lower thirds that you can create. Even um, some of the things that we did, uh, as far as video, it's not, you know, live, but the um, graphics and frames that you'll see on tweetpages.com, well, I'm actually using in ScreenFlow, and I'm building a frame that's transparent so you can see through it. And then my video proofs have that. So, yeah, scroll down a little bit, Joel. You'll see that little frame on that video is is actually in screen flow so that you can see through it. And then whenever it plays, that frame pops up as well. So having those kind of things, digital assets surrounding and involved in your video, whatever it may be. Live video um, is a little bit different because you don't get to design as much. But there's usually a place to <laughs> – sorry, man. I, I, I held on that. It's, and that's a difficult one to do because we all fail at, at, at being consistent. It's hard uh, to do that. But uh, in mobile uh, live stuff, usually there's, there's very few spots that you can kind of put your brand in. Um, but if you, anytime you can pop your logo or your face in there, I recommend that in, in those kind of areas. As far as, again – um, uh, which platform there's so many out there it's changing mm -hmm. uh, and, Saeed, and Joel, yeah, you can answer that. well of course I will Saeed yes there is an app for Be Live on your smartphone go download and you should be able to watch and participate in, uh, in live videos that way as well Brian backs it up consistency and congruency with a healthy helping of chocolate for the win um, Matt, this is uh, great content. I really appreciate you coming in. Before we let you go, two things. The first one is you've been through a massive trial over the past few weeks. And, uh, <laughs> you kind of had to go off the radar a little bit. Um, and and it, it wasn't fun, was it? No, no. So I am a, uh, a habitual uh, kidney stone producer in my life. Uh, so I've nice uh, to know that you produce things. Hey, something you got to produce something. Hey, at least I'm consistent, right, Mitch? Uh, for 20 years, uh, I have produced kidney stone. I've passed four or five, and this recent one, and I'm a slow passer. Some people you go to the hospital and they say, "Oh, we'll drink lots of water. You'll pass in a couple hours, a couple days." I am months. So it started in December. I almost went to the emergency room in February, but just recently, two weeks ago, uh, maybe three, I ended up going into the hospital. Um, they did a CT scan. It was an eight millimeter K stone, uh, which your ureter uh, is three to four millimeters. So anything over a five or six, they usually recommend. Um, Matt rocks. Thanks, Joel. The other Joel. Um, <laughs> There's only two of us, apparently. Yeah, yeah, the other Joel. And so they said, you're, you're going to have to take this out. So it was uh, about three and a half days in the hospital, um, which as an entrepreneur, you know, if you're not working, you're not getting paid. You're not paying your bills. So it's been a challenge over the last couple of weeks just being able to process through that and get through that, you know, you know morphine and pain pills when I get home and all that kind of good stuff. But um, uh, definitely eight millimeter kidney stone. This was by far the most painful uh ordeal that I've had since, uh, you know, over the four or five that ones I've had. And, and if anybody's had a kidney stone, you know, the pain. Uh, and of course they compare it to, 
to uh, giving birth. But the problem is, at least at the end of a birth, you, you get a, a child, a baby. This is like a little piece of rock candy that you, you know, throw away or have it tested, whatever. Let's, uh, yeah. well, I'm glad you're recovering. Wow. I'm, I'm very glad that you're recovering from it. Let's answer, answer one more branding question here from Andres. How do you choose branding colors? I've got a beer brewing podcast. Speaking how would, how kidding, would you approach no. that? So, yeah, I, of course, everyone's a little bit different. And, and being able to talk to him and process through uh, what he's looking for is going to be the first step. But just thinking about it, obviously, you've got the typical colors of what beer generally is. But how to do that in a whether you want to go with a classic look, um, bright colors, that's the challenge of trying to figure out what you want for what you want to build and being able to listen enough to get those uh, you know, colors out of you. Let's do, Again, a quick, uh, let's do a quick live case study. Andres, if you would t- uh, tell me the name of your podcast, I will, um, I'll bring it up on screen. Or if you have an existing website, um, go ahead and type that in. And, um, and I can actually pull up the site and, and Matt can take a quick look at it and you'll see his, um, his brain power in action. Again, this is uh, Joel.live, and my guest is branding expert and designer extraordinaire, Matt Clark. And uh, you can go to, Matt's got several pages, but the easiest way to find him is by going to tweetpages.com. It's a very uh, happy, colorful site, and um, I've, I've personally received a lot of value from, uh, from Matt and the stuff he's done for me, which includes the, uh, the branding that you see on my blog and also some of the, the social images that have been created across multiple platforms that help establish my branding that are consistent, as Matt has beat the drum on, consistent. So you'll see very similar branding with a similar logo, color schemes across Twitter, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, YouTube. Uh, did I leave any off of there? Of the, the prime? Oh, Google uh, Plus. We, Google Plus, we've done things for Kajabi. We've done things for uh, uh, LinkedIn business and personal, uh, about.me. You, if there's a spot for a graphic to be placed and you're on it, we recommend being able to design to it. And we've had clients that say, well, I'm on Twitter and Facebook but and, and YouTube, but I don't really – I only have one video on YouTube. I never want to sell you anything you don't need. Let me get that straight. But if, if you're on Twitter and Facebook and then you've got one video on YouTube, you're on YouTube. Because what you don't want to have happen is somebody go from Twitter to Facebook and then go over to YouTube and go, well, this isn't the same person. There's no consistency there. And so you, you, you don't know if it's them or not. So you want that to be able to be consistent throughout that go, oh, this is the same person. If not, delete that one YouTube video. And then we don't, you don't have to spend the money on us designing it. But if you're using it, we recommend designing. And there are a lot of, again, um, you know, we did book covers to e-products. So um, from little 3D membership cards to video things to um, uh, even Brian D. Johnson, we did his, uh, when we did his logo, we kind of did a little animation with, uh, so he uses on his videos in the intros, and it's a little punch thing, which is actually my voice on there. I was kind of doing it as a test, and he liked it, so we kept it. Um, Brian G. Johnson! So that's, yeah, that's uh, on there. It's a little it's punch. Great. It looks like a little punch, and, it's, and it forms the G of his name. Uh, Paula, yes, you'll be able to view this replay on the page that you're viewing it now. As soon as the video is over, it takes a couple minutes to process. And then, boom, you can go back to the beginning. Start all over. Take notes. Um, Mitch uh, mentions that he's going to be reaching out. And uh, Mitch, does a, a he's an attorney, one of the good ones and, in California. And he does a, a show called The Show Dot Live, again, using the dot live domain which you can get your own and save 20 percent by going to joel 20 dot live see what i did there a little product placement that worked out nice um so matt any uh last tips that are brewing in your mind that you would like to uh, do a brain dump on here before we close out well well speaking of brewery getting back to the gentleman who who asked that question i think there are a lot of color meanings um and 
and basically, you know, being yellow, being happy and, and red, being passion and all these kind of things that have these color values and, and meanings back there. You can always look at those. You can Google those and, and look at those um, so that you can see what your brand uh, would communicate. But I also don't only stay to those. While that's a guide, I think also looking at your brand and your idea and where you want to go and where you want to head sometimes changes you out of maybe those color meanings uh, to be a different color. So while that's a, a, a great guide and I use that, um, it's not the only reason why I would go with a specific color. Right. So, so emotionally, um, I'm demonstrating. Friendly, exactly. Uh, I've pulled up a color emotion guide for people to see what you're talking about. All you got to do is is type color emotion guide or branding color chart on Google, and you'll see a lot similar to this, but it shows you yellow truly usually indicates optimism. Um, orange is friendly. Red is excitement. Purple is creative. Blue is trust. Um, green is peaceful. Gray is balance. And then you can see the examples. There's actually a number of different charts right, that you can see. So examples of red, you know, Kellogg's Coke, um, pink, you know, Barbie. Uh, it's not just pink because girls like pink, but the things that communicates love, calm, respect, warmth. Um, example here of orange, you know, there's uh, there's Bitly, there's Fanta, Blue, uh, you know, Explorer, Intel, Skype. And so you can go and, and get a feel for uh, what colors might best relate to your brand, uh, from these uh, these charts. Yeah, no, naturally all those like green, eco-friendly, red, generally, you know, while it grabs attention and also I think it says, uh, they say it produces a sense of hunger. So a lot of restaurants will use red. Um, mm -hmm. So all those kind of meanings and those things are very important to look at, but they're not the end all. But the, at least for me, they're not. I, I always kind of look at those and we talk through those, some of those with clients, and then we are able to move from them if they don't work. And then having complementary colors, um, a base color that you would potentially use um, across the board, and then having multiple colors like we did with you, Joel, we are able to, to have one logo but multicolor. Right. Um, we also did that for uh, great homeschool conventions. And so they did kind of three different areas. Um, and so we use the three different colors to represent those three different areas. It's a um, rainbow, a cornucopia of emotions, basically. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Mr. Matt Clark of TweetPages.com. And Matt, I asked you before we went on if there was something special that you would like to offer to anybody who would want to work with you. What did you come up with? Uh, you will receive a free video. No, I'm just kidding. A free video proof. Uh, the, the real thing is, there's a couple things. Um, we just did our site, so some th maintenance things that we're processing in the background, but I will be sending Joel a code, and he will shout out to his people that code to be able to get a discount on an order. So, Mitch, hang on. Um, and then the other one is something that I will also be doing, and that is booking Matt for the day at a very discounted rate, and that day, you, we design almost anything that you want. Besides the logo and a website, it's a big price point, but basically a small price point, a $300 price point. You book Matt for the day. We have a, a consult in the morning. You have all your stuff ready. And then I design, it could be all your social media. It could be e-products. It could be um, some animation. Uh, it could be PowerPoint slides, wh whatever you need. Whatever we can accomplish in that day, we'll do. So it's a great discount, but we'll book, and there's only 30 that we'll do. Again, that will be something that we're going to send uh, to Joel, and he will be announcing that so that we'll go let's, out to let, – Let's uh, short-circuit uh, all of that. Let's just say anybody watching this uh, broadcast, all they have to do is reach out to you um, at Tweet Pages or go to TweetPages.com, fill in the contact form. Is there uh, – a simple place that they can comment, say, saw the video? Yep. Okay. So Absolutely. Where is it? Is it down at the bottom of the page here somewhere? Where's the content? It's actually at the top. Again, we're, we just redid the website, and so there's a couple oh, of things that were – But uh, there's – and as well as the order form, if you go through it, there's some spots on there 
um, that you can say where you saw us and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so reach out to Matt at tweetpages.com. Follow him on the Twitters at tweetpages. Uh, you're getting compliments here for the great content today. Thank you all for watching. Uh, Anna says she's booking you for the day. And honestly, I recommend everybody does. Um, there, this is not an affiliate program for me. I receive uh, no commissions from Matt. This is his business. I brought him in purely because he is the branding expert. I trust him and uh, and I recommend that, that you do as well. You're welcome, 720 Media and everybody that was watching. Uh, Matt, thanks again, dude. I really appreciate your time here. And, Thank you uh, very, very much. Tweet page on, you rock star. And uh, for the rest of you, of course, I always appreciate you watching. It's great to have you here every Thursday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, noon on the left coast, 1 o'clock here in the Rocky Mountains. Until next time, I will be here with my spinner. Probably, I'll be right here where you leave me. Um, and this thing will probably still be spinning. So, until next time, you guys do